ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Premier League. This is sponsored by Twitch TV, hosted by Angel, and brought to you guys by DotaCommentaries.com. Today we're watching Dignitas versus Navi. This is one of her very, very few remaining matches. Navi currently leading the pack here in the Premier League points. They're currently sitting at 19 points. And if they win this best of two series, they will be undisputably a number one no matter what other teams do. So this is... Pretty big match on the line. Dignitas, somewhere down the middle, they're, they're not going to really get the third place even if they win all the remaining matches. So this is going to be something for glory from some uh, street creds, trash talking rides. I'm Luminous, of course, and uh, joining me today, it is a B-Balling773. What's up, man? What's up, dude? It's very it's very much an honor and privilege to cast with somebody as illustrious as yourself. Oh, man. You could, you could calm down the... <laughs> Calm down the uh, trash talk, whatever. We have a uh, Darkseer Venomaster ban here on Navi. Navi's been down banning Darkseer all day long. And Dignitas banning Chan and Anti Mage. And we see Invoker being first pick, meanwhile, followed by the Ferion and the Enchantress. Uh, I think it was actually against Navi that Darkseer sort of made his first compared debut with the Scepter. So I think since then they've had a mortal fear of that hero. And they don't even want to play him. So <laughs> they just constantly ban him. But I guess it's been working because they are probably the hottest team at the moment after beating Complexity. So, whatever works, man. Whatever works. Yeah, Navi was able to demolish Complexity, even Absolute Legend as well. Both hailed to be, uh, you know, the pretty big name teams. And, well, they're gonna let's see how they're going to do against uh, Dignitas today. It's going to be Firion Enchantress. So, right off the bat, we're going to see pretty much a long lane Firion from Light of Heaven. Uh, we've been seeing him play that role. Time and time again, we're going to see Enchantress defensive jungle, probably with the dual lane top. What that's going to happen is Enchantress gank, and then we're going to have Fairion TP in, and suddenly that lane changes from a dual lane to a four hero lane. You get you know two tower push down very quickly, and then Navi stabilize themselves with a very very strong goal lead. So let's see how Dignitas is going to respond to that. They do have Sanking and uh, Invoker, which can be decent counter pushers, but both of these heroes need a lot of level to be truly effective. Right. It'll it'll also be interesting to see if Sand King picks up any levels of caustic finale. I mean, I severely doubt it, but against the trees and enchantress creeps, it's never really a bad idea. But then again, uh, I don't really expect it to see happen this game. As we see, Vengeful Spirit, sort of another very standard Navi hero. Let's see how they decide to lane it, if they're gonna do the support or if they're just gonna have Havos play it and play it as like a semi carry and just push it for the win. Yeah, I think it. I think uh, generally from the last couple of games I watch him see. Watch them play. It is going to be a support revenge, uh, although to what extent as uh, they get so much tower and so much go anyways that she could actually be a pretty strong DPS force. Nice Soccer is going to get the ban here from Dignitas. Um, I, going back to the Cosmic Finale point, I, I don't think they will actually pick it because I, I don't see Sanking actually having the chance to hit the creeps at a melee range without being stunned down to death. But that might change depending uh, how the games go. We're going to see a Crystal Maiden ban here. want to get rid of some of the extra AoE that Dignitas could pick up to defend the push coming their way. But yeah, so far seeing Firion and the Enchantress and not picking up a Rasta uh, is somewhat questioning. Neither team is actually wanting to pick up that hero, maybe, and it's not getting banned so far at least. So we'll see where it goes from here. You know what I'm really hoping for? Jakiro, Sven combination from Navi. Oh, that would be so exciting. After seeing that in a couple of the defense matches. But, you know, Rasta is still a very strong pick here. Except if they want to solo mid with the Venge, or if they want to dual jungle, it all really depends on that. It all really depends on what Nai decides to do with their Enchantress, if they're going to dual jungle, if they're going to solo jungle, etc, etc. But I guess Dig Dignitas has a lot of pressure on them in terms of combating this very early strong push before Invoker gets too very high leveled. Yeah, actually Navi was very... Uh... Feeling very safe giving away Invoker to Complexity, and they ran this exact same lineup or same structure of a lineup, and they just pushed down Complexity very quickly. Invoker was never able to get too big. So let's see if Navi is able to do that exactly, exact the same thing again against Dignitas. Um, what they did against Complexity in that game was push so fast, but well, Invoker only was able to hold up to level 10, 11, and the game was pretty much over by then. Uh, so Lesh is going to be the uh, counter pick here. By Dignitas. I do like that choice. It's going to give them very reliable AoE. That lightning is so annoying to push up against. Generally, we see Split Earth and Diabolic Edict to be skill choice of Lesh, but I think in this game, he might actually offer lightning instead because, well, the pushing power of Navi is so, so strong. Yeah, you might be thinking, 
Well, is the Splitter Earthen Diabolic a good anti pushing tool? Because against the low armor of the creeps, Diabolic does a ridiculous amount of damage. That's true, but, you know, Light Strike has to go r right up close to them, and, you know, against heroes like Enchantress and Furion, uh, Diabolic Edict probably wouldn't be the greatest anti push tool, so I'm in complete agreement. It's like you're psychic. I expect to see a Lightning Light Strike here. Yep, and uh, it depends on what type of lane he is, because so far right now we don't see too many supports on Dignitas. Sand King can be played as support, same thing with Lesh, but that really limit the potential of these two heroes if they're dumped down to the support role. So I'm looking towards Dignitas to pick a hardcore support. Not many supporters left in the pool though, so I'm not too sure where they want to go here. I guess Witch Doctor is a choice, Dazzle is a choice, but these heroes are rarely really picked. Yeah, it'll also be interesting to see if they pick up any sort of DPS either in the late game because, I mean, if Nari decides to build a Ventral Spear as a DPS, then all really the rating has going for them is magical damage. Of course, Nabi always tries to win the game around the 20 minute mark. They prefer the for sure victory with getting a lot of tower kill gold rather than a long drawn out game. As we see Storm Spear being picked up, I have not seen Nabi play this in quite a bit. Yeah, of course, Dandy's going to be handling that storm in the mid lane. And, uh, well, there's a lot of squishies that Storm Sarah could eat up. Uh, the Windrun might be a little bit more difficult to kill. She does have Windrun. Of course, she's going to get some items here and there. And same thing with the Invoker. But, again, if Lesh and Sand King are the support role, they could, he could eat them up very quickly. Enigma is going to be the last pick here. The not Demonic Conversion is going to provide some sort of weak form of counter pushing. It does eat away an enemy creep and give you three of your own. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's the Black Hole they're looking for. Um, the Midnight Pulse is decent, and it's going to be tiny as well, so and it's going to be tiny Venge on the top lane, Light of Heaven, uh, Firion on the bot, Storm in the mid, Enchantress Defensive Jungle. At least that's what I think, maybe they're going to swap off the Tiny and Storm, and put a Storm Jewel lane top, we'll see where, how that goes from here. And what Tidy excels at is just demolishing squishy heroes, so... I mean, if Tidy gets a really fast Blink Dagger with a reasonably high level, he can become an absolute terror okay, in this game, and... Right now, I'd say Dignitas has pretty good push and anti-push. They might just out-push Navi if it comes down to it, but I don't know if they really want to go for that because their team fight is just so exceptional that I'm sure that's what they want to rely on. But it looks like we're going to see the Lash Act transition to the bot lane along with everybody. Yep, both teams going off to the uh, defensive lane here, maybe to prevent the enemy team to drop off a ward uh, on the pool camp. Let's see who's playing what. Leon's going to be playing the Windrunner. We have Zill playing the Enigma. Sony is going to be playing Digni uh, playing Invoker on the mid lane, and then we have Lesh, who is not playing support role. It's going to be handled by Come With Me. As you can see that he has not spent any of his uh, gold on Chicken or Ward. Coco, the support sanking, has wards right now, and going to be dropping one off probably here. Meanwhile, on the Dire side, we have Arzart playing that Ventral Spirit, Puppy playing the Mirana, Dendi playing the Tiny, Havos playing the uh, Storm Spirit, and Light of Heaven playing the Fearings. It looks like your predictions were completely messed up. They're just trolling you. Yeah, no, Night of Heaven uh, com prediction was he's on the long lane, and indeed he is. But, uh, no, but you said Dendi would be playing the Storm. Yeah, no, Dendi always plays on him. I know I hope was playing instead. But yeah, uh, De well, maybe because the Tiny was picked up. And Tiny not going to go mid. It's going to be top with Ventral Spirit. And that defensive uh, Enchantress, of course. Enchantress, obligatory smoke of the seed purchase. You could look towards them. Uh, be ganking it up once they have a good creep. Probably a Centaur or a Furbog. But yeah, on the bot lane, it's going to be uh, Come With Me. And the Sand King, and of course this is a very old school, like Dota point four AB old school uh, <laughs> dual lane. And uh, well, let's see how it's going to work against Light of Heaven, who's getting a little bit harassed down here. To anybody who doesn't get that reference, it looks like a Split Earth that lands nicely, and Light of Heaven is forced to probably use some tangos right off the bat. Use two or three just to get back to that full HP, but in point four AB for the original Dota, uh, dual stun lanes were all the rage, Sven, Lina, etc, etc. It looks like we're going to see Dendi solo top against Windrunner in terms of just out harass, and since Tiny has zero armor, or uh, sorry, he has one armor, uh, Windrunner should be able to handle herself just fine, but she always got to be on the lookout for her Jaws, Bro, aka Puppy, whoa. on the, there. We're on the bot lane here, Bro Strike into Split Earth was all they needed, uh, and, and against Prophet, who is a very low HP hero. First, sorry for missing that one, but first play actually going to Dignitas, I did not expect that one, because Navi so very good in terms of diving for those first blood, maybe did not expect them. Uh, Dignitas to play so aggressive early on, and that's going to set Ferion back as he actually has to walk back in lane. No level into TP yet, has applied for Treants early on, and that's going to delay his ability to hit that uh, high level of TP and Sprout 
to join another lane and start pushing it. So, so far, even though that first blood was on the other side of the map, it actually protects the top lane very well. So, Leon, pretty happy with that first blood uh, being picked up by the bot lane. Right. Meanwhile, a dual lane mid with uh, Havost and Arzar. It looks like Arzar is going to roam a bit, maybe jungle with the Enchantress because she wants to get uh, levels up for Havost. But no, she's just chilling in there. Meanwhile, it looks like Light of Heaven is not having a very good time at all. But Sand King is going to try to check through, and it's going to be a rune battle at the two minute mark. Very common these days. Well, the rune is going to spawn on the top or bot. We'll see. It's going to be bottom illusion. Not the best rune. Uh, he's going to drop off a ward. In fact, he can use these illusion runes and go for a backstab, allowing the illusions to tank up a little bit. That's exactly what he's going to do. Of course, the creep wave a little bit push as well. Uh-oh. Light of Heaven might be in a little bit of trouble. He does not see that the rune has been taken. He's basically dead at this point. If he, Yeah, he's he's dead. Uh-oh. Of course, level 1 burrow strike. Very low range and very good move here by Light of Heaven. Getting out just barely. Here comes Dignitas Zizzo as well. They're going to convert a creep and go immediately into a push if they want to. In fact, you convert the treants. No, he converts another creep. And this tower might be going down very quickly. It is going to be Diabolic Edict as 2 and 3. In fact, not the defensive one. He's going to go offensive with his Diabolic Edict and push down this tower very quickly. As this does literally like a billion points of damage to this tower. Meanwhile, Puppy is maneuvering in position behind Leon and is going to drop the tornado creep. So annoying. And Leon is forced to win runner out. She will be able to escape just fine. But all the while, pressure is being applied very heavily to that bottom lane. Light of Heaven. Can't really do too much until he hits that level 6. It can only summon Truants and just feed experience and gold. But it looks like the Dignitas push is repelled for the time being. And all the while, Invoker and Storm Spirit are dueling it up. Yeah, I, I'm actually very surprised here that it's Demon Toss that's getting the uh, opening kills and the opening aggression here. Normally, Navi very good for that. Now, Ventral Spirit comes around. He, uh, She is smoked up right here looking for the Windrunner. I do believe they are finally going to get this Windrunner kill. Uh, Enchant, Magical Missile, and Dendi coming in should do the job here. Trying to bait out the Windrunner. Getting a little bit blocked here. We're going to have a Magical Missile. Yeah, Avalanche Toss. Very easy kill. Dendi picks up that kill. That's going to allow him to hit, hit him up to a Magic Bottle if that's what he's going for. Or he could get a boost of speed, but seeing that he's so low HP, I think he's going to go for the bottle. Yeah, indeed. As it's not really too unexpected, as Light of Heaven is in a lot of trouble. Burrow Strike and Split Earth, a couple more hits. Let's track and gets the last hit. Very nice to play with me. And with that, they're going to be able to push down this lane once they clear the creep wave and summon some Eidolons. And I was about to say, you shouldn't really be too surprised at the, uh, the aggression by Dinkatas because they have a very aggressive pushing team when you look at it. They have uh, summons, uh, they have Edict, Leshrac is, in my belief, one of the strongest level 2 or 3 pushers in the game, if not the strongest. So, to see this sort of aggression coming out for them, it's not too uncommon, as Light of Heaven is just constantly ushered away, poor guy. As another Burrow Strike comes in, Diabolic doing so much damage at the early stage of the game without very high armor level, and another kill. Light of Heaven is just being destroyed at the moment. Unfortunately, they have to back off from the tower because the glyph is fortifying. But again, this bottom lane is just Dying going so right for Dignitas. Yeah, great move by Dignitas, realizing that the Light of Heaven did not have boots of speed. And if you look at Lesh and Sang King, both of them sporting a new pair of boots, new pair of Nikes, was able to die past the tower, catch up the Light of Heaven very quickly, and bring down the tower. And now on the top here, we have Navi doing the exact same thing, but the tower very healthy in terms of HP. They do not have Diabolic to push down this tower. Uh, they do have an Ogre Magi who can actually cast Frost Armor on their creeps, which is exactly what he has done here for the melee creep to make it even more tanky and this tower will be brought down <laughs> Enchantress being tossed in the air for that extra 100 damage against the tower very nicely done and let's see if they're going to continue pushing yes indeed they're going to enchant a melee creep and add a little bit more tanky force into the push as we see Dendi up to 700 go after the tower last it will be going to his arcane boots very likely and let's see, Sankey's going to come right in, Burrow Strike on the Ventral Spirit, I think he's going to be completely fine, you can see the uh, Ice Armor keeping everyone very very survivable, and we have a Bottle Crawl attempt, no, what, what did he deliver to Danny? just Magic Wand, send the bottle back for a little bit of Bottle Crawling. Yeah, and it's very unusual to see both teams pushing while Invoker and uh, Storm Spirit just constantly farming up, but this is a good way to counter Invoker, because he doesn't really hit his peak until maybe level 10 or level 11 when he gets a really high level of that tornado and just clear creeps like a boss. Uh, but this is one of the good ways. This is why in Dota 1, Invoker sort of died out in the Chinese scene because he can be countered once he doesn't get enough levels. But right now, he's just chilling on the mid lane. I expect to see Navi try to push down the mid tower, put a little bit of pressure on that Invoker, or maybe they just don't care at all. They're just like, Invoker, 
we don't even like you. We're just gonna win without your presence being felt at all. Yeah, very un un uncharacteristic, uh, non center skill build coming from Invoker. Invoker generally put a little bit more point to it to Quas early on for a level, a little bit of a leveling presence. But instead, he's actually pick, put points into Exhort, which signifies he might want to actually turn into the turn away from the standard Quas Wex build. We'll see where he, where he actually goes from here. As we see Coco holding very, very uh, still behind the trees, going for a gank. I think he could actually burrow strike through. Let's see if he's gonna go for it. Oh, he's gonna be seen by the creeps. He's gonna be fine. And Havos. He is not a true ninja. No, he's not. Unfortunately. On the top lane here, after getting a kill, another kill on, on uh, the enemy hero, Stendi, able to hit level 6. After, of course, he's going to be going for Avalanche Toss, all the way up to level 8. And then, uh, let's see, he's going to go into Grow. We're going to defending the lane very easily with that power shot, but has lost one tower. Neither lane deciding to push a tier 2 just yet. Opting for a little bit more items, a little bit more farm time. Looks like Dignitas is going to be starting to push on the bot lane. Face boot up here, a lesh. That's going to give him a lot of uh, chasing power, but not enough survival power in my opinion. Yeah, I think lesh rack, I mean, you, you don't really want to chase. You just want to be in the middle of everything. I mean, if you want to chase effectively, it looks like another avalanche uh, magic missile combination. Unfortunately, Winner manages to press that W key at the right moment. Shackles uh, Rzr2. Whatever to a creep, and Dendi is unable to get the kill. Meanwhile, looks like another successful gank or a successful counter gank goes on. Sand King picks up a kill on the Vengeful Spear, and now Light of Heaven in so much trouble. Sunstrike doing additional damage. Sunstrike was missed, but uh, generally we don't see Sunstrike picked up so early. But that's what we talked about. So Sony taking one point to exhort as we see Storm Surf zips right in for Sony. Uh, he is up on high ground. There's a net on him as well. He has no invoke just right now, cooling down. But Dendi comes in position and polish him off. Dendi, a lot of kills so far, and he has actually opted for face boot as well. I like this choice very much. So that's gonna allow him to actually catch up to these very slow moving hero as he's trying to do so right now. He does not have mana to do anything at this point. Well, he has mana for one. Spell, but does have the magic wand he can actually pop up as you see a toss and magic missile for come with me avalanche misses cleanly and they're not gonna get a kill thanks to that phase wheel and come with me actually then they phasing in as well can they get off yet another magic missile oh then he very God. low hp as well and that lesh just trucking it out there and now we have light of heaven trying to look for whoever i think he tp back as well that was enigma so very nicely done here and it looks like dendy or excuse me puppy looking into enemy jungle for a creep as well do you see how much damage that edict did to Dendi yeah. because of his insanely low armor value? Dendi's got to be careful if he chases too aggressively on Come With Me next time because I think overall Lesh Track has a basement speed of 315, so be able to outrun uh, until Tiny picks up a couple levels of that grow. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Havost is not really making his impact felt with these ganks, but Puppy's going to come in for the mid lane, try to get a gank off. Unfortunately, it looks like the Radiant have scoured them out are going to try to defend this tower because that's what they look like they're going to do. They're just going to keep pushing. Yep. When in doubt, just push. A little bit of fray here for the Invoker as he only hit level 7, 9 and a half minutes in the game. I'm not too sure how much time he's going to be able to get EX, uh, EXP here. As you can see, oh, Havos trying to dodge that EMP. In fact, it lost more mana for nothing, basically. I'm surprised that he's dropping EMP so early because he's only got 3 points in the Wex. So the EMP is going to drain like 150 mana 100 mana something like that not not too really big to be uh make a big difference but he's casting it as we see tiny 900 go in the bank he's picking up a smoke of the seat this is a very dendy esque move to do whenever he's playing pudge whenever he's playing tiny he always buys smoke for himself and set up the gangs he basically doesn't even smoke his teammates just smoke by himself and just be a one-man gank. Maybe he's going to go up on high ground smoke up here. Yeah, he's going to smoke right here. I'm not too sure whether the enemy team have seen this. But I think they're going to the bot lane to look for these very, very low HP pushers on the Dignitas squad. Yeah, I mean, Leshrac managed to pick up an Ogre Club. But still, he's very squishy, very frail. And I think they'll be able to pick him off. A toss in by the Enchantress. Edict immediately pop. Sandy copes in and no help needs that. The chip just gets immediately obliterated. Looks like Zizo is positioning himself very nicely. Gets a nice black hole, double man black hole. They pick off the less track, and instead, Dendi is able to escape with the sliver HP. Very nicely done by Dendi, and now Leon is in a lot of trouble. Havos just doing a mad amount of work, and Leon failed to escape with that haste rune. Ooh. Barely make it out. Arza oh, wanted man. to swap and just sudden now Sony A comes in a very terrible position and now Stormstar picks up an ultra kill. Light of Heaven so low in HP was able to make it out alive as well. I thought the team fight was gonna turn out horrible for Dick uh, for Navi because they toss Puppy in. 
Um, Puppy just melted after casting a single enchant. I'm sure he wasn't too happy with Nendi's move there, but in result, we have Stormster somehow picking up an Ultra Kill. Very lucky with the last hits, and he's actually still very healthy in terms of mana. That Ultra Kill is going to give him his Myrtle Hammer, and very, very close to his Black King Bar. We're only 11 minutes in the game. One Stormster pick up his Black King Bar. Not too sure what the Radiant Squad could do. I mean, they have Black Hole, but <laughs> in the early game, of course, it has, I think, 180 second cooldown, something ridiculous, at least 160 seconds. And meanwhile, Dendi just getting closer and closer to his Blink Dagger, 900 gold away, is probably going to look for some farm on the top lane, but Light of Heaven already there, ahead of him, just constantly being annoying with that Prophet, and just pushing the lanes with that Basilius, yeah, leaving no breathing space for Dignitas, to be quite honest. Yeah, very interesting to go for Basilis build. So we see Dendi gonna pick up a solo kill against Sony. Sony's gonna go into his Wex. Cold Snap, EMP gonna be dropped. Tornado be dropped on Dendi as well. Dendi with face, but he's gonna eat a Malefice and a lot of damage coming his way. Dendi just ball steep. He pops the Invis rune and is gonna keep on chasing. He does have to face one more toss. Gonna do it. No mana do so right now. Sony Ace. Ooh, we have a... Uh uh oh, uh oh, bro, should I come in? I think Sony Ace is actually blocked. He's gonna go into Ghost Walk. As we see, Dendi slowed up Shackle Shot against Light of Heaven. He's gonna take a Burrow Strike to the face. Burrow Strike should be cooling down a little bit soon. Yeah, he's gonna go down to a Power Shot. Nicely done. And Dendi's still sticking, or excuse me, Sony Ace still sticking around. So is Dendi in Viz as well. Looking for kill. Unfortunately, don't have enough mana for both an Avalanche Toss. Yeah, right now it's pretty hard to say who has the advantage. I mean, I think Dignitas has more towers due to that double tier 2 tower being picked up on the bot lane. But Storm Spirit picking up that BKB might make all the difference getting an ultra kill so early on. will just be devastating if he zips in against the Enigma, if he has the black hole, if he zips in against anybody. They're essentially dead because they're so low HP. Yep, back on the mid lane, the push continues. I just checked the gold graph, Dignitas leading by 1,000 gold at this point. Not the biggest lead, but here comes the Storm, so they're gonna look for Coco. Coco gonna Sandstorm and walk out with Shackle shot nicely, canceling both the Tornado and the Storm series movement. Very nicely done, and let's see if uh, Navi's gonna answer back with a push of their own. Not too sure whether they can, though. Well, they do have three points in that command aura, and they have a couple creeps in the way that... Uh, Wildkin Warchief providing that additional armor aura, but looks like the Enigma combined with the power shots going to be a little bit too much, but I think they're just going to wait for that BKB and the Blink Dagger to be finished on Dendi and just try to go in from there. As looks like Light of Heaven is in a lot of trouble. Come with me, going for a soul kill with Diabolic Edict. Phase boots allowing him to chase effortlessly. And now Light of Heaven in so much trouble. Split Earth by Leshrac combined with the power shot. Sure is come with me, an easy kill. Poor Light of Heaven just... Always in trouble, but it looks like Denny comes in with a surprise kill from behind on the Enigma. And now Vo zips in, gonna go for a kill on Coco. He managed to get a double burrow strike stun. Still, Navi just. Alright, we're gonna lose one. Well, we're gonna try to pick off heroes near your side and then try to push a tower as well, which is the right way to do a gank, in my opinion. A great move by Hovos here, just zipping like a couple of centimeters away to get the extra purge from his hit. And able to do a little bit of extra damage to the Sanking, so one of those very tiny plays that Havos just showed off here. But yeah, it seems like maybe Facebook is the correct boot choice here on Come With Me, because he could actually go for a lot of solo kills that you generally don't expect a Lesh to pick up, but he's actually uh, been picking up a lot of kills, and he's going to be close to his Black King Bar as well. Now, even though he has Black King Bar, he could basically run in like a champ. He's such low HP that he's still very pervious to uh, physical right clicks, so we'll see how he actually buffers his HP after the Black King Bar. Uh, but that's uh, quite far away from here, uh, from that point. So we'll see how the game goes. Dendi's been playing beautifully so far. He's going to be about 50 gold after this camp. He's going to have his uh, Blink Dagger and look towards more action by Dendi. Yeah, meanwhile, Kunthi about 1k gold away from his own BKB. So he's getting quite farmed very early on. Uh, if they can just buy enough time with their Leshrac and Invoker to get enough levels. I mean, he's only level 9, and this is sometimes the problem with Invoker. I know people say he's extremely imbalanced, and he's a very, very overpowered hero, almost bordering on the point in this metagame with not all the heroes being introduced. But you can still fight him by just pushing him. And it looks like Kamathi is just going to try to solo push down another tower with that Edict. And the Glyph is not being activated. They're going to be able to pick up a tower with relative ease, but Puppy comes in from behind. And the Splitter is being dropped on Arzar. Couple more hits. Oh, Arzar is able to skip just fine. Now Puppy takes the fall instead. Nicely done by Dignitas, just keeping constant pressure when Furion is not in the lane. 
Yeah, but this... they're not even worried about the fairy. They just go kill him. <laughs> yeah, the fairy hand yeah, actually right has to worry about Lesh. The gold, the gold difference chart is really crazy here. We're seeing very little gold difference at all. As we see a blink dagger in, come with me, dodges that one cleanly, nicely done. And now Dendi with his uh, double damage actually looking for more because cooldown of that toss avalanche combo very short. Now come with me goes right in. Gonna go for a kill against Dendi. That's a very bold move. Avalanche toss. No double damage hits though. Very hard. And Dendi still going for the kill. Avalanche yeah. toss. Gonna get the kill. I'm not too sure what come with me was actually hoping for. Dendi ooh, gets cut off. Now we have Navi. <laughs> Volt comes right in six. The Burrow Strike Shackle Shot not gonna lie. She has very little mana to actually work with. He has eight charges on the wand. Can he actually make it up? Burrow Strike. He dodges that one with his ultimate 2.9k go. He's gonna have his BKB as soon as he visits his base. And uh, actually skipping the bottle as well is Hovos. And looks like this game is not gonna be ended in 20 minutes. So now no. he's playing the game. They. Uh, they do not like playing as much, and Invokers are just going to become a bigger and bigger problem as the game goes on. And furthermore, let's see how this Enigma is doing. Sorry, I can't click him. He picked up a chain mail, going to go for that mechanism, so even then he won't have too much base HP, but he'll, if he does survive a fight, he'll be able to pop that mechanism for additional AoE heal. But the problem is, just surviving that fight, once Pavos picks up that BKB, I'm sure he's going to try and initiate on Zuzo. Yep. Seems like both Windrunner and the uh, Invoker both going for the four stat before anything. Uh, Invoker skipping the drums, just stopping at the Bracer, 40 extra HP. I think that's a great choice against heroes such as Tiny, who basically just initiates the team fight. And also against the Storm Spirit, sure you're not gonna make them survive against the Storm because you'll just waste the extra bit of mana to continue zipping in, but it just gives your team a little bit more positional advantage to make the Storm Spirit zip in a little bit further into enemy territory and away from his team. So a great item to actually uh, fight the uh, Storm Spirit. And uh, yeah, he does have, uh, he being Leon, has that force that finish, and she's a very mobile target now. And it's going to be difficult for her to die unless Tiny comes in with a one hit KO. Right, Enchantress. <laughs> Four Enchantress. 18 minutes in the game, still only 625 HP can kill killed in one combination. But now Denny Flicks in combined with Havos. They're going to try to get a blink. An avalanche does not come in the Combined with the toss, but Havos combined with Dendi is able to pick up that kill. Epicenter is being channeled. They're going to try to pick off Light of Heaven at least, and nicely done by Sand King Coco. But Dendi blinks, tosses the Sand King backwards. He's in a lot of trouble. Blinks back, but Avalanche is there to receive him. And looks like reinforcers coming in for the rear. Going to try to get a kill on Havos. No mana whatsoever. Zizo is able to, but he pops the BKB. He's going to try to run out, but no. Black Hole is being popped just for Havos, but nice blink back in by Tiny. Canceling that back hole, picks up the kill and so, but Winner A clicks down the tiny. My god, will this fight ever ever end? And I think right now it might, because Dendi is forced to retreat. Meanwhile, Leshrak got a solo kill? Yeah, Lesh got a solo kill in the jungle around this area against Puppy. Again, come with me looking for those solo kills with his face, but he is going to have his blacking bar afterwards. I was just talking about how Dignitas, a very uncharacter mistake not having teleport scroll, because all three heroes jumped on um, the invoker, but no single TP went to assist. Well, that's because they were killing other stuff all over the map. Come with me. Might be a little bit dangerous. He's... Uh, is he going to speed spot it? He's going to be fine. But yeah, despite of not having any teleport scrolls, they were able to clean up a couple kills. And you can see that Dendi's control on that, um, oh, Dendi's control on that tiny is so good. When the black hole comes up, he actually blinked behind Enigma, and that's the best way you cancel that black hole. Because, well, he can't black hole behind himself. That sounds like a very duh thing to say, but that's exactly how you cancel black Captain hole. Captain Obvious to the rescue. Yeah. Dendi is going to be going for his Axe Scepter and look towards him, carrying Big Stick. And, uh, what is it, uh... Walking uh, with a big stick. The yeah, yeah, there you go, man. Some American Bring politics. Stick, <laughs> I'm sure, like, all of our uh, Asian and uh, European viewers will be like, what the hell is that? Meanwhile, Leshrak picked up his own BKB, so he's going to become even more of a destructive menace, and I think Skirt, or Ray and Tyre are going to have to be on the lookout for Leshrak just taking control of this game until Invoker and Enigma pick up their essential items. Let's see how Sand King's doing. Does he have a Blink Dagger? No, he's 1k away from his own Blink Dagger. But in the end, I'm not too sure. I I mean, Radiant has a better team fight lineup as the Dandy blinks in for the toss. Ghostwalk is popped. Do they have dust? No. Looks like Invoker's escaped just fine. Puppy taking a lot of damage. And Arzar is going to be the first one to fall. And then Puppy comes in. Nice counter game by Dignitas. A double kill goes on Leshrak. And did he even pop the BKB? Lesh did pop his BKB. Was able to be a, a menace as he popped his Diabolic Edict. Uh, still not putting too... Oh, actually has a... 
really skipped his points into Lightning Storm and actually has gone for the uh, Pulsing Nova. I actually like this uh, adjustment. Generally, you max the Lightning before you go into your ultimate. But in, in such engagement where the Stormster is right next to your face all the time, the Tiny is right next to you, the Freon is generally next to you all the time as well. Having that ultimate to splash out that big AoE damage, especially with BKB, very good choice here. And, um, well, that's helping him to and his team to get a lot of tower. As you see, right now, I think... Dignitas is leading this game by quite a bit, to be honest. The gold difference charm only show like a thousand to two thousand gold lead, but I, I feel like they have the complete advantage here so far. Well, a lot of damage is being applied to that tier two tower, while Dignitas managed to take that tier one tower. So they gotta be careful, or else and will just teleport in, just gank that tower, and the poor tower will never know what's coming as. Dendi trying to maneuver himself into position, but Dignitas has been doing a nice job counter ganking, but with his faithful companion, Havost. They will surely be able to pick up any kills. He's gonna zip in on Coco. Avalanche toss. It's gonna stack. And Diabolic E combined with Splitter. Tavos is in a lot of trouble. One more tower. Oh, he's gonna die. Come with me, just being a terror in this game. My god. Yeah, come with me with that phase beat into a BKB build. The perfect build. I Did we even doubt that build in the beginning? Well, <laughs> or, or bad. Damn, that build is working out. Of course, a lot of it was come with me's. Beautiful split earth. That double man split earth was what got the kill on the BKB storm. So very nicely done. He's up to 1700 gold. I wonder if he's going to go into a point booster into Hearthstone. But look at Dendi. Another invis rune. He's actually controlling every rune. He's going to get a ninja kill. No. BKB gets popped. He's going to blink back out. At the very least, he drew a BKB charge. But I think Puppy's going to pay the price here as he's healing truants has ran out at this point. So coming off with the second Malefice. Can he get off the enchant very slow? In fact, I think Sony should have pushed Zo forward instead. No. We have another secondary four staff. They're going to get the Puppy death. There's a four uh, power shot. Yeah, they're gonna get the kill. So nicely chased. Unfortunately, Dendi already back home, unable to help out his team. And now Dignitas leading by four kills, leading by a tower kill, and about 2k gold. Dignitas looking very healthy, and they have the mid game advantage in terms of having Invoker, a very very farm lush, and a moderately farm sanking and Windrunner. Looks like that made a very odd item choice. He picked up a late hand of Midas. Uh, yeah, I guess that's cool. <laughs> Gonna provide him a lot of, a lot of additional gold, considering he did not have the best early game. But one of the weaknesses of Leshrac when you go for this uh, early BKB and phase boots, you have no additional mana, and Leshrac is a spammer. But now that he's picked up those core items, he hasn't been dying, he's been getting a lot of kills. Look for him to pick up a lot of mana boosting items, just to allow him to stay in those teamfights for ever so long, and just... He's just gonna be... They just have to keep a constant attention on him, or otherwise he's just going to kill your whole team without a pipe. Yeah, and right now Lesh with that point booster is approaching to a point he's actually going to survive an avalanche toss combo from Tiny, and that's going to be issue. That means that he could BKB immediately after and just go to town with his uh, spells. As we see, uh oh, can we get the chains on against Havos? He cannot pop his BKB MP Tornado on top of the air. Channel ultimate black hole just to make sure he get a kill. A lot of ultimate being used. Wow, and of course Havos calls a WTF lag. I'm not too sure how much lag would have mattered if he was chain done as we see a meter being dropped down on Dendi they want him dead as well second burrow strike should be coming off cooldown in just about four or five seconds light of heaven comes in right now avalanche comes in and looks like Kugo is gonna survive that avalanche Ooh, not gonna do it as we see me and my entry missile on Leon it's a half for come with me what about come with just arrives to the party Nova edict split earth double kill he arrived so late to that party because he was farming that top one and then he had to travel quite a distance but Dignitas is just playing very, very nicely. Just constantly counter ganking, picking off Havos before he could even do anything. Wow. And Dignitas is just playing at the top of their game. Yeah, man. I was going to say Dignitas, do not underestimate them, and they really, really show their play here. Leading by six kills so far, they just want a team wipe. And I'm not too sure how Navi is going to go from here because I think their heroes has really hit their peak so far. Tiny, um,. At this point, he's going to try to win the game off having really good level advantage and item advantage. But even though, I, I don't think he's able to catch up with the fast growth of the Radiant Heroes. Looks like Invoker is going to go for that Yield Scepter Divinity. And he's slowly starting to approach that level where it gets really annoying. I mean, he's already at that level, to be quite honest. But he's going to hit level 14 soon. Just slowly, slowly start to carry the game for his team. Meanwhile, Light of Hand picked up a Mechanism. Still only 1k HP. And now I think they're starting to realize... Without pipe, I think I don't know what we're going to do against Leshrac, and so Dignitas are just exploring that to the full advantage, just winning on the back of their superior team fight. Another 1.8k gold in the bank, going to go for that Aghanim Scepter, and looks like Sand King picked up his own Blink Dagger. He did not have Blink Dagger in that last fight, 
but now he's got it, and his ultimate is back up in two seconds. Yep. So it looks like they toss, they want to push. Yeah, and also right now the key thing for the Radiant team is that their Sanking is level 14, so his ultimate is going to hurt uh, quite a bit. After two more level, it's going to be a devastating ultimate in conjunction with Lesh's ultimate. We're seeing a lot of AoE damage splash about. Speaking of that pipe, is there anyone making one on this dire side? I don't even I don't see any parts. So. Yeah, so they're, they're completely cut out in the dry, and I have no idea how they're going to withstand this big AoE damage and it's going to be coming in their way. Of course, Zizil's black hole, so far it's been one man black holes, but it's always on a storm surge. Yeah, it, it hurts. Um, so, here comes a push on the mid lane. Looks like coming they already below half mana, but they're going to be able to pick up this tower with relative ease. Uh, yep, they're going to get the add-ons to click them down. Deny attempted, but not succeeded as usually you want the a puppy has a headdress, so he might be going for a very late pipe. But even with the pipe, he's gonna have so low HP, and this is a problem with late game enchanters. If you don't pick up, if you don't get a very enchanters is a very momentum based hero. You want to get a lot of uh, HP items, try to go for an early agonims, which helps you solve our HP items. So even if you do get a pipe, you'll have more than 700 HP 27 minutes in the game. Yeah, definitely not boasting the high strength growth. She actually had decent strength growth way back when, like maybe one and when two years. she super Imba. Yeah, and then Ice Rock says, we'll, we'll cut your strength growth by half. Oh my god, that was one of the biggest nerfs I've ever seen in Dota history. Never mind that, on the bot lane here, a Genka Temp here against, uh, come with me. He pops his BKB and tries to gallop his way out. In fact, he sees Enchantress and be like, oh, that's a deer meat. That's literally deer meat. Uh, in fact, but she runs out very nicely. BKB pop here as well. Black hole on two. Come with me. No mana to actually do any damage. And it's going to ditch. <laughs> in fact, Stormstar is going to find him right now. TP out from Enigma. EMP Tornado drops on Arzar. He's completely dead. Cold Ooh, actually pops a magic wand and should be fine for now. Sand King comes with a huge ultimate. Light of Heaven's dead. Arzar is dead. Ty Dandy might be in a little bit of trouble. He gets Cyclone in the air. Try to delay him as well. Hobo's very low HP. Shackle shot not latching. And actually Puppy with such low HP still hanging around. Toss damage, puts him at very low HP. Dendi walking right through that ice wall, completely slow down. Cold snap. Oh my goodness, look at that chain stun. And now Leon in position. Shackle shot, not latching. Power shot's gonna hit though. And now, wow, look at the chain stun here. And now Puppy's gonna go down as well as he's trying to help out his teammate. But with multiple four stab and such high mobility, they're gonna find Puppy very easily. And despite that, he's actually at 400, full HP right now. You're only seeing what? 800 HP, that, which is absolutely nothing. Yeah, and now that his heal oh, is down, they don't oh, him. he's gonna be able to gallop in, just gracefully galloping away, but no, the tornado, or the Yules has popped, and a couple more hits, literally a couple more hits, even though he's at half HP, but Havos zips back in, gonna pop the BKB, pick up at least a kill on Windrunner, and now <laughs> Invoker's gotta run for his life, this Invoker is just playing really well after that, as so, I'm not really too sure what Zizo was doing right there. Well, but he got he, he got just dies. he got swapped by eventual spirit. So uh, despite that puppy, they actually end up dying. They got themselves two extra kills. So it might not be the worst trade here for Navi, as Navi showing some great control on the hero. I think Stormstar after he popped the BKB and got a kill, I was like, okay, this is time to get out. But he stayed his ground and f keep fighting, and that was yeah, because eventual spirit. Yeah, but keep in mind that uh, Lesh track, he basically had no mana for that fight. He popped his BKB and started running. Yeah, that's an issue. And if, I think if they had a combination of Lesh track combined with that really nicely placed Sand King ultimate. I think Navi would have just gotten white. So maybe the lack of arcane boots really hurting uh, Dignitas in that last team fight. But I think Lesh is going to finish his Acceptor. Yeah, he finished the Acceptor right now. That's going to give him huge boost in terms of mana and HP pool. And that's going to make his ultimate even more devastating as if it was not devastating enough. Look towards Lesh or whoever else and make it available to Discord as it is going to be an absolutely terror in this game. Combined with Epicenter, Diabolic Edict, and of course that... Uh, Pulse Nova from Lesh. It's gonna do I don't so know much damage. That it exists, to be well, quite honest. <laughs> well, maybe not in the hearts of pro game. I actually seen uh, EG or not EG. Yeah, I think EG made it the other day against um, Quantic in their defense match. So, I mean, pro gamers do realize the items in the game. So hopefully, we're gonna see one this game. Then he's looking he's for. He look bad. Uh -oh. As a giant tiny with a tree, he's gonna kill you. He he is literally gonna kill you. He looks like a really awful serial killer with that tree oh my god he is truly terrifying how does dandy just find like is this like his fourth in this room i think it is i don't he know just... but this is like the 800th edict being popped and puppy dies in two seconds 
Puppy is just not having a very good game at all. And looks like Name Toss, they want to take the Roshan. Edict does affect Roshan, so once that uh, Edict is back up, expect to see Roshan fall very, very quickly. And yep, they're going to be able to DPS him down just fine. And in terms of team fight, Name Toss has the better team fight. So now you can't just rush in willy nilly. They want to just provide pressure on the lanes with Firion. But it looks like he's just going to jungle for a bit. Going to try to go for a hex as he picks up the ultimate orb. Let's see who the Aegis goes to. I guess Lesh. Elmer. No, no, Invoker. Nice. I thought Lesh. I think Lesh would be a decent choice because he could burn his mana so fast. He comes back alive full with full mana and keep on going. But uh, here comes the big moving rock as he's uh, hasting or actually phasing. He moves so damn very quickly. And now his Axe Scepter, I think he's splashing 400%. Something like that? 400%? Calm down, dude. Calm or down. 40%? He's splashing a lot. I think it's 40%. No, 400 AoE is the splash range. I knew there was a 400 in there somewhere. I was like, 400 splash damage. <laughs> that sounds a little That's... bit... Yeah. So where, yeah. where does Navi go from here? Uh, they're going to have Hex done in Storm Spirit, just in 600 go. Dendi, I think he's pretty much decked out. I don't think... I mean, you could, you could get even more items, but... Uh, maybe they want to build up some carry arms on Arzar, but no, he's just got a point booster. Gonna go for those wards. Puppy still 758 HP, so 32 minutes in the game. Uh, this is, a, again, the problem with Enchantress when you just don't win the game very early on. She's not really as effective as a Chen. She does a lot of DPS, but if you can just kill her in a couple of hits, and she has to be in the middle of the battle, and... I wanted to make a point earlier, like this Invoker in that last team fight casted so many spells, so really nice Invoker being played by Sony Force as he's been casting all the spells and expect to see him once he, he picks up an Ogre Club. So I don't know if that's for a BKB, most likely, but if he picks up an Axe then... I think it's for Axe, he does have an Ogre uh, Point Booster on him as well, so just 2k go from Axe, that's going to give him 2 second cooldown on that Invoke. And in the hands of a pro player such as Sony, he is gonna cycle through so many spells. I think it'd be funny. The MP tornado just gonna burn quite a bit of mana here from uh, Havos, but he does have that sheep stick, so mana it's not too much of an issue as he's gonna be able to regen it all back. Meanwhile, let's check out Zizo really fast. He has a mechanism, he has strength treads, he's not really going to go for that BKB, which I think is the right call, just try to tank up as much as possible, but unfortunately, he doesn't really have too much gold to tank up with, as Kamuthi has the Agonims, he has BKB, he picks up a Void Stone, probably going to go for a Sheep Stick as well, but Void Stone is so effective on Leshrac, yep. I mean, the problem with Leshrac is that, even with the Agonims, like, if you use all your mana, you regenerate so slow, compared to how much your mana pool costs, or your mana's, your spells, god, can I speak? Yeah, he definitely could burn through so much uh, mana that he... I mean, even with Hex and another really high mana regeneration item, he could still spend all of it. Light of Heaven sensing a gang coming his way. He's going to TP out, and that's a very ex... Oh, Tornado! Wow. That was like melee seconds. In fact, nice dodge here by melee seconds. And then he's farming for Hyperstone. It's going to be uh, AC or maybe Maelstrom. Or Monir, but I think it's most likely it's going to be AC. Right, and we're going to see that Tiny hit things with this big stick so very quickly. Which I think if, to be a sensible person, you should just run away from that. But it looks like Dignitas, they don't care. They oh, have come with all me. the items they need. Team fight. Come with me. Three people versus two. Come with these, got to be a little bit careful. Oh, he's looking for that deer. Puppy. Uh-oh, puppy's dead. On, At the very least, she drew a BKB charge. So I guess that's good. By my edict. <laughs> well, it is at six seconds now, so it's not the charge duration. As host is forced to GTFO, and Dignitas. I mean, this is this is why <laughs> Nature's Problem is so annoying to push against. But in terms of very quick pushing, Leshrac is probably one of the best heroes in the game. You don't have to wait for a long cooldown ultimate like a Crab ultimate. Uh, you just have that edict and just kill towers so very quickly. So if Dignitas wants to push, I definitely think they can. Yep. Uh, Maybe they just want to get Invoker a little bit more far and try to pick up the Agonims so he's going to be complete devastating force. They want to really take advantage of that Aegis and just have Invoker as max potential so that Skirt or the Dire is forced to focus him. Yeah, despite the big advantage that Dignitas is in, they have a level advantage, they have kill advantage, they have item advantage. They're only up by like 
2k go and 3k go or 1k go actually stormster zips right in going for a gank here comes a tp in from the oh that might have been juke right on havos tp gets hansel and now havos need to get out he's uh oh bkb done we're now soon diabolic edict if anyone uh, was been wondering diabolic edict does a mixed damage type so that means it does both magical damage and physical damage so bkb does not block it armor however reduce the damage magical resistance reduce damage as well Right, as you see, Staff of Wizardry, so Invoker about 1k gold away from the Agnims, but Denny's in a lot of trouble spinning in the air with that tree, gonna try to thwack the Enigma a couple of times, gonna get the Avalanche toss, Black Hole immediately cancelled, Swap goes in on Coco, but he still changes his epicenter for a couple seconds, and Denny is gonna be the next one to fall as he gets focus fired, as Arzart takes another 2 seconds touch by the Sand King, just chains thing like a boss, and come with a Leshra carry for the win, my god. Havos comes in a little bit late to the party, manages to pick up one kill on the Sand King, but after that, I don't... He can't really do too much. Yeah, this is the time here for Dignitas to push, maybe not for a tower, I don't think they could actually do that much damage, but they could push for some territorial advantage. Uh, Lesh out of mana at this point, but he, you know, with that voice stone. Just with a voice stone alone, he can regen quite a bit. You can see his lightning, lightning, by the way, 5 or 6 second cooldown, so he could be spamming that during a push as well. And uh, with well, that successful team fight, that's gonna put him closer to his hex stick. And come with me once he finishes hex. Oh my god! I think this game is over at this point. Well, you can never count out Navi in any game. That's true. That's true. But that, uh, <laughs> the item disadvantage is just too much. As we see a gank on tap on Havos on the top lane, Havos gets picked off with full mana. So that just means that Dignitas chained on him like crazy. Hex stick number one is finished on the win winner. And uh, we're gonna have a acceptor finish in 50 gold for Invoker. You can never count out Nava. This is this is looking very grim, very very grim. As after that ultra kill, I don't know. I mean, Avos is doing all he can, but Storm Spirit just uh, sort of starts to die down once you know other teams starts getting tanky items, and that's the power of getting pushes going on with that Lesh rack. Just be able to pick up tanky items, nullify a bit of Storm Spirit's damage. So even after that ultra kill, so very early on, uh, you can see that Dignitas, you know, they're just going to take the initial damage. Dendi might be in a little bit of trouble. No, he's probably just going to be able to bleed out just fine. Uh, let's see what he's got. He picks up that. You already said he got the Hyperstone. He has 1.9k gold in the bank. Yeah, so a bit, still very, very far away from the AC. So more, more ancient <laughs> Wait, farming. Fifteen hundred gold away from the AC. So yeah, that's pretty far. Is it fifteen hundred? Does he have his yeah. other two components? Yeah, mail and chainmail is nineteen hundred. So ah, that's right. Basic math. Learn to math. Basic math, math man. That AC come. I, whenever I buy AC, I feel like it's it's so expensive, especially that fifteen hundred recipe. But anyways, light of heaven. Uh oh, can he can he have another close dodge? I I don't think so this time. He's gonna hex Coco. Can we have a? Ah, uh, that's it. Is hex gonna go on. Are they gonna really take this team fight? No. Nope. Midnight Pulse being dropped and Dendi is forced to back away. Light of Heaven taking so much damage. Pulse Nova edict and come with me is just in the middle of everything. This is what he wishes he had the ages, but no, he's just taking up everything with that BKB. Gonna get a couple kills. Gonna pick off the enchanter. So both taking so much damage. My God. How are they doing work? The Vos is going to be the next one to fall. No, he's going to be able to zip out just fine. Meteor being dropped in by that Aghanim Scepter Invoker. And Invoker is just so annoying at this point. And Arzar, he's not going to be able to escape. You can't run from the Ag Scepter Invoker. You can't run. You can't hide. He's going to get you. Oh, here's the uh, light of heaven. He bought back. Teaming, she gets Shackle up to the tree. Dendi back as well. They might actually save this vengeance. So he's Coco. Very low HP. Arza is still sliver of health. 72 HP. He's gonna get picked off here by Treens, I think. Still, Sony is looking. Look at Arza. He's gonna get one more stun. Light of heaven comes right in. There's a sprout. Oh, he's gonna get picked off regardless. But I think Sony Ace is trapped. He's gonna go into Ghost Walk. Do we have any true sight? No, we don't. Gonna be fine. Meanwhile, uh, Dendi chasing this uh, Leon. Leon very low toss. Him in the air and a hit. Dendi and his squad with a couple of buybacks able to pick up a couple kills but here comes yellow and it's gonna get pincer by sony ace who's back to full hp full mod at this point i think he uses ages maybe that's why he did use his ages deafening blast combined with a couple of right clicks and the malefist dendy is gonna fall for sure invoker unstoppable doing so much damage with that exhort build at the end once you pick up all the levels that you need gonna try to max exhort before quas and he's just right clicking for so much damage and in terms of physical DPS, now nah, he ain't got none. Except yeah. for like an AC Tiny, which is pretty cool. But 
<laughs> it's not very practical because he's melee. It's not going to be enough, especially with all these stuns coming their way. If you're going to just count stuns, that's got oh, one. Pep on the bot lane. I saw Kofi Edict Pulse Nova. Melts. Melts nice. Lesh showing off some cool lines. Earlier in that engagement, in this top lane, Lesh was able to 1v2 as his teammates uh, trying to bring down the Storm Surge or whoever else. Or actually, he was 1v3 and he had got two kills before he died. And that just shows the power of Lesh. He's only going to get stronger as he's about 500 away from his Hextic. And uh, come with me showing some great split earth. But so uh, earlier I was saying that um, Dignitas, they have so many stuns. Lesh got one, Wimmer's got two with the Hextic, Sandstorm, or excuse me, Sand King's got one more, Enigma's got two. And Invoker just got like 25, so we're looking at, you know, 30, 40 stuns coming in against Navi, and that Tiny, it, he can't really stand here and right-click despite having so much damage. Only a slight exaggeration on that part. <laughs> Only a slight. Well, the thing is, because he has a two-second cooldown, he can cycle through so many stuns, it's it's not even funny. It's a little funny, because it's ridiculous. Yeah, man. It's a ridiculous sort of funny. As Sand King... Uh, hasn't picked up any items since that Blink Dagger, but it don't matter. He's playing <laughs> carry less track. This is the build I like to go on less track. Um, but I'm not. I'm obviously not coming to his level or even very close. But this is a build I think makes less track a very, very strong semi carry, if not a full on carry. Just tank up, and do a lot of damage. But he needs some items to be effective. But in this game, he's getting them, and now he's pretty much winning the game single handedly. Big move by Navi here. They're gonna say we're gonna give up top tier two tower, which, in all honesty, not too important as a tower. But they're gonna get themselves an Aegis. Let's see who they're gonna put the Aegis on. Maybe Light of Heaven. Maybe Dendi. We'll see. And it's gonna be Dendi picking up a tiny. I think that was a great trade in favor of Navi. They were gonna give up the tower regardless. But here comes a Rax attempt on the top lane by Dignitas. Dendi, are they gonna transition to a bot push? What are they gonna do? It looks like they're gonna defend for now. Yep, and looks like Dendi has finished that AC, so <laughs> Age is tiny with AC, gonna do work in terms of physical DPS, but if he gets chain stunned, he oh. might need to look for a BKB as there is a giant lag spike. Oh no. Are we good? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Warriors of the world. Awkward silence ended. <laughs> Looks like the game just wanted to take a short break, and uh, top tower is going to be defended for now. Havos got to be very careful about the hexes, because it don't matter if BKB or not if you get hex and chains them down death, which Radiant has been showing that they could uh, do it with plenty amount of stun. Light of Heaven and Dendi's going to stick around on the bot lane. He's going to force one TP, and the tower gets destroyed by the tree, and so at the very least, they traded tier 2 towers, got a free Aegis. I think that was great play by Navi. In the last couple of minutes. Yeah, in terms of decision making, Navi is clearly at the top. I mean, <laughs> and, and they're exploiting it even when they're so far behind. They're just making all the right choices. I think the Gitas could have just pushed because that tier 2 tower, even before that game, was below like 300 HP. So I think if they just pushed in and tried to pressure down Navi, or maybe they just wanted that Aegis really badly, but they weren't expecting Navi just to take it. So. Uh, they were maybe a little bit confused on where to go after taking that tier 2 tower. But looks like the Invoker doing Tornado is going to whiff Arzar. Very lucky for Arzar. As he's going to escape just fine. Going to go for the Aghanim Scepter working towards it. But he's not going to pick it up anytime soon. Hex stick up on Come With Me. And here comes a myth push. Now would you have Aegis on Tiny? Uh, but they're not TPing back just yet. And that's going to allow Come With Me to walk right into the base. It's going to pop his Lightning and then Diabolic get that tower. Is gonna take massive amount of damage. I do believe Glyph is on cooldown at this point. Come for me does not have the Aegis. He's tanking the tower shots as well. Probably not the best. Sir Storms there zips in right now. Pops the BKB. Stuns Leon. Here comes Tiny. Look towards him to zip into everyone. But he's feeling guys canceled by Coco. Nicely done. Black hole. It's gonna whiff completely. Not hitting too many target. Hovos have HP. He's gonna get chain stunned down. Yep. Looks like the carry Lesh delivering so far. Denny getting the right click in, but he's melee. He's actually just running back and forth. Zizou, very low HP. Light of Heaven gets completely stunned. No, he's going to get with one kill. Stormstar comes right in and going to get one kill as well. What a defense. Wow, here. They're not done just yet, though. Stormstar, very low mana, but cooldown of the Hex almost up. He's going to be keep on chasing. Where the hell is Dendi during the middle of this fight? He's kind of just... 
That might have been a mistake by Coco, as he's gonna get picked off as well. Storm Sphere and so more mana. He should have just kept running, but Coco is gonna be next one to fall. As did you see how much damage? Like there's two radiant heroes stacked up next to each other, and that cleave from Tiny did work. Well, Light of Heaven says no one alive at this point. Gonna be pushing MP Tornado from the back from Sony and Meteor as well. But actually, Life Hunter has Hex and he's gonna turn around and start whacking on Sony. Sony, oh my goodness, this is gonna be a kill. And who counted out De Navi? Nobody. Nobody counted out. Oh, I did, but damn, Navi coming back on, on this game and they're gonna take Bot Rex. No buyback whatsoever. Dignitas was feeling so very confident, but now the gold grab is going to swing like a pendulum in the complete opposite direction. And keep in mind that Denny does siege damage with that tree. Yes. Look how much damage he does to that tower. My god. Literally in five hits, he killed that tower. Oh, pick off the mid barracks. Is this GG? This is GG. They're going to go on top on the racks. And look at Denny. Oh, man. Oh, my god. What is going on? I have not ever seen such a quick three racks. Then he says, "Good luck." Wow. I'm I'm a little bit speechless right now. Four hits, one racks has come with me. <laughs> if you were Dignitas, how would you feel right now? You're up by ten kills. You were up by like 3k gold. Double damage. I, I'd just, I'd just be like holding my set in my hands, just forlornly, as a single tear rolls down my eye. Don't run off. It's a very emotional experience. Would it be fair to say that Dignitas was winning 44 minutes of this game? I think Dignitas just pull, pulled the LeBron James, if you know what I'm saying. Dang, the call out! The call out! <laughs> that's, that's a pretty sick bird. Yeah. This this was a game. <laughs> We're just waiting for Dignitas to leave the game for that end game menu. And, uh, well, late game Mask of Madness for the lulls from Dendi. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just speechless. I am too. But How did least, that game like, change yeah, around? Storm Sword died early and he bought back and he just picked off like everyone at that point. Dendi was able to deliver a lot of damage. And then yeah, Dignitas, Radiance no buyback. I think uh, Radiant's mistake was that Leshrac tried to solo the team, but the heroes were so far spread out behind him they couldn't really support him to the fullest. And yeah, Lesh, I think Invoker backed out a little bit too early in that fight. Yeah, Lesh ended the game with 17 6 and 6. My goodness, but it was it was the uh it was the Dendi <laughs> ACX after Tiny that carried the day. My goodness. And that was just game number one. We'll be coming at you <laughs> with game number two momentarily. Hope you guys enjoyed today's broadcast so far. This is Luminous and B-Balling signing off momentarily. <laughs>